Trigger warning, this video contains needles, doctor's office, nurses, doctors, medical procedures, injections, and other things related to hormone replacement therapy. It is for educational purposes only, so those who are watching should be watching to learn about how to inject intramuscularly, subcutaneously, um, or what the process would look like for them if they were to pursue testosterone pellet injections to the canal in the fat layer of the glute or the thigh. Viewer discretion advised. Hey everybody, it's B, and welcome back. We are on the third part of our series, which talks about the different forms of injectable testosterone um, for trans men who are pursuing hormone replacement therapy and medical transition. So, today is the one that you have all been waiting for, one of the newest methods, one of the least talked about and least known about, I guess, methods of hormone replacement therapy, which is the injectable testosterone pellets. Um, so basically, I'll describe the process before I show you the video, that way for those of you who are kind of squeamish and don't want to see the video but want to know exactly what happens, I can sort of like give you a breakdown of what the process is. So the very first thing that you need to do is talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor, make sure that they are qualified and able and capable to do this procedure. If they've never heard of it before, they don't know how to do it and you want to find somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. I lucked out, my doctor, Dr. Raj Singh here in Las Vegas, Nevada, actually is one of the people who goes around and teaches other doctors how to do this method so he knew exactly what he was doing. And it was actually his suggestion to try this method when I started having anxiety about injecting on a weekly basis. The purpose of the testosterone pellets being inserted in the fat layer of your body is so that you are able to, as a body, your body metabolizes the testosterone pellets over the course of five to six months. Um, it decreases the peaks and troughs situation that you get with weekly or monthly injections. Um, in addition to that, it allows for your body to sort of regulate on its own the, um, the amount of testosterone that it takes. Also, uh, last and, and almost most importantly, I would say, it decreases significantly the amount of free that is floating around in your body and potentially converting into other hormones like estrogen. So, it's incredibly beneficial, but it's also incredibly expensive. It cost me $700, I think, to have this method done for me. It is hardly ever covered by insurance. It was definitely not covered by my insurance. So those are some factors that you want to take into consideration. In addition, you do have soreness in that injection site area for about five days, um, as well as some minor bruising. So these are things that you want to you take into consideration when you um, decide whether or not you want to do this method of hormone replacement therapy. I'll go ahead and walk you through the day that I had when I had this procedure done. So the very first thing after setting the appointment um, was we arrived, we did a just a vitals, check all the things and make sure I'm good to go. Um, I had already had a blood test done and they did want me to do my, my typical weekly testosterone injection prior to the pellets being inserted because it does take seven to ten days for them to like activate. After that, he applied first like an iodine solution and then he went ahead and injected the site um, in four or five locations with lidocaine which we now know I'm actually kind of like super sensitive to, but at the time we didn't know that. And he waited until it was completely numb, and then he took a tool which he had already set up on his little tray um, to create, bore, like bore a hole in my fat area, um, in the glute and thigh area, that would create a canal for the four testosterone pellets which lined up on top of each other like that much. Once he created the canal using his, his special tool for that, um, he then inserted the four testosterone pellets directly into the canal and then he sealed it with Steri strips 
and a plastic, there's a word for it, I don't remember what it's called, but it's the same thing that they use on your tattoos when you get a fresh tattoo. It's just a, a plastic thing that it stays on your open wound for two to three days. Um, and uh, it basically like advances the healing, so there's minimal scarring, um, and also it allows your body to heal a lot quicker using the fluids that it secretes from the wound, which is really, really cool. And that was it. It was about a 20 minute procedure, all told, uh, if that, and it was relatively, I felt nothing until the next day. Up until that point, I had no soreness um, because the lidocaine worked really well. Unfortunately for me, because I am super sensitive to lidocaine, I then had like two days of nausea and like I basically just had to live on Zofran and water and crackers. So that's it. That's the process. It's super easy. Um, he allowed us to record this, provided that my face was not in it due to HIPAA. Um, so he consented and I consented to the filming of this for educa educational purposes. In addition, um, he went ahead and answered any of the questions that I had had during the procedure and he also talks to the camera. So you get to see what's happening and he also sort of like narrates what he's doing, which is super beneficial. I think. So just a forewarning here, I know I already put a trigger warning at the beginning of like all three of these videos in this series, but I just want to really be super clear that this video does have blood and it does have um, an open wound on a live human being, which is me, and I consent to this video being used for educational purposes. Um, but if you are squeamish at all in any fashion, I do not recommend watching this video. Um, I feel like I gave a really good description as to what the procedure was, and uh, you know, viewer discretion advised, proceed at your own caution and your own risk. All right, here we go. Did that hurt? Doesn't hurt. Okay, good. Just infiltrating the anesthetic in the different tracks. I have this, and then this is going to go in and create a track, mm -hmm. and once the track is made, we put the load the pallets in here, and then we put them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Thank you. That's good. Okay. So see, this is a much uh, more care camera. Yeah. Okay, so that's why. Do you feel this? Are you okay? Um, I don't feel pain. There will be a little pressure as long as yeah. you don't feel pain, you're okay. That's so trippy. That's crazy. We can always numb it a little bit more if we need to. No, it's good. That's freaking crazy. Is there going to be any kind of bruising or anything? Minimal. Okay, so I am good. So you want me to kind of walk them through what we're doing, or yeah, yeah, good. okay. Go ahead and walk them through it. I'm Dr. Raj Singh. I work here at Healer, and uh, I authorize being in this video. So what we're doing is uh, inserting uh, testosterone pellets as part of our uh, gender reformation process. So we are going to be inserting four testosterone pellets. So what I've done is I've already anesthetized and I've made a small incision to allow the cannula to get in so we can insert the pellets. The procedure takes about 15-20 minutes. It's not painful, it's a little uncomfortable but it's not painful. Yeah. So I'm going to go in the track You okay? Yep. I feel nothing, really. A little bit of tugging, but that's it. There we go. When the pellets go in, where will they sit? 
they stay in the fat layer okay. and they can stay up to six months so generally the hormone levels they start dropping around month five mm -hmm. and then we need to reinsert again gotcha so i don't know if you can see the palette in there so we're just going to push this through make sure it's in the right spot and that's it so that side is done Did that hurt? No, it just feels weird. <laughs> so it doesn't hurt, no. So these pellets are going to release a little bit of bioidentical testosterone every single day. Generally about a week for the effect to start appearing. And then the levels stabilize. And that's it. And we are done. Dang. Wasn't too bad? No, not at all. That's freaking trippy. So you will experience just a little bit of uh, bruising where the, the the cannula went through, of course, mm -hmm. but it should not be that the whole bellic is blue, okay? So it will be just a little bit around it. Okay. We're going to put a dressing on it, so after two days you can take it off. Okay. And then next two, three days you are not allowed to just lift heavy weights or okay. do running or jogging, any of those things, but regular walk, just take it easy. And the reason for that is that there is still an open track where we went through mm -hmm. to insert the pallets. If you do those activities, sometimes they can raise the pressure inside the muscles or your belly, and that can push the pallets out oh. or bring them, make them more superficial. And that's okay. not something we want, okay? We want them sitting where we inserted them. Right. So that's pretty much it. Any questions you have for me? Um, so, am I ever going to be able to feel the pellets through the skin? No. No. Because they're sitting in the fat? Yes. Awesome. If you feel them, then that means that they, we inserted them too superficial, and that's not correct. They have to be, should not be able to feel them at all. And what are the benefits to this compared to doing injections? Well, first of all, you, you don't have to worry about injecting yourself, mm -hmm. right? So, the... The comfort factor is there, so there's minimal pain, mm -hmm. right? So once we're done this, you're good for the next six months. Yeah. So there's no injections once a week mm -hmm. or once every other week. Two, because this is a your body's getting a very low dose of testosterone release every single day, so there is less testosterone available that can get converted to estrogen or other hormones. So you will have fewer side effects, fewer spike in estrogen levels. One of the issues we see with testosterone is when we do injection that it raises other hormone levels right. because there's only so much your body can use on a daily basis and then the remaining is just available to get converted to estrogen and estrogen is a female dominant hormone so of course that's not something we want right. and because and the testosterone injection also because we have to use a much higher dosing here it's a very, very slow, much lower dosing. So risk of having, you know, high hemoglobin levels, what we call polycythemia is low. Risk of thickening your blood is too low. So side effects are basically minimal when we do pellets. Awesome. The other benefit is that when we do inject testosterone in your muscle or any injection on a long-term basis, it is going to cause some scarring in your muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So... That's not a good thing. That's why I like subcutaneous injections. So pallets, those are some of the benefits. That's awesome. Yes, but they're not taught in medical school. So yeah, this is something that doctors have to learn after their actual training. So this is a kind of, we travel and teach these kind of skills to others. Which is really cool. I love that you do that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. So I'm just going to put a dressing on top and 
And the dressing I just remove after two days? After two days and uh, just try to not to get it it's waterproof, but try to not get it wet. Okay. Because uh, water has bacteria. Yeah. So when they have bacteria and uh, they can get into the track right away. Put the pallets in. It's okay to have a little bit of bleeding around, but that's okay. But it, it should stay within within the dressing. Okay. okay. Awesome. So that's how what it looks like. So you're all set, my friend. Thank you, babe. <laughs> okay. You can get it and then. All right. So that was the procedure. It was super quick. It was painless. Like I said, I you can hear throughout the video. I am giving an update as to what I can and can't feel. Um, the only thing that I felt was really weird because. I could tell somebody was poking around in my body, which was <laughs> super trippy. If you like what you saw today and you want to see more, that sucks because like I think I don't really have any other real medical things to share with you guys education-wise, at least until I go in for top surgery, which is something that is in the works at the moment. Um, but I do regular vlogs and other things where I talk about my transition and just like my life in general um, as well as answer like other questions if people have them so feel free to ask your questions in the comment anyway as I was saying if you like what you saw today and you want to see more hit that button down below subscribe become a member of the Jackalope tribe and earn your antlers and don't forget to follow my cat Juniper on her Instagram. The handle is right here and the link is in the description down below. I really hope that this video was educational and helpful for you. If you're anxious about this procedure or you had no idea what it was, I hope that all of your questions and concerns have been answered, but if they haven't, please leave it in the comments below. If there's a question that I don't know the answer to, I'll be sure to direct it to my doctor and give you a, an expedient response. Um, Alright, peace out from Skillet Biscuits. It looks like the world is starting to like open up a little bit, which is kind of scary, but also kind of exciting, and I don't know about you, but I am very ready to, like, sit down and eat at my favorite restaurant sometime soon. <sighs> Alright, I love you. Drink water. Get some sunlight. Bye.